Hi. My name is Jeb. I haven't even seen that movie. Jeb. I love the meme though. Already distracted. You you either clicked on this video because you wanted to learn about the uh, GPU particle system for Godot 4, or you wanted to create a Wind Waker-like explosion. You know, the pretty cell-shaded explosion from uh, the GameCube's Zelda. Which isn't really rocket science, but there were a few things that took me way too long to figure out. Mainly how to have sprites as particles instead of uh, standard meshes. Um, also to uh, transform those sprites, to make them rotate and scale um, whenever it explodes. Um, to have the sprites billboard towards the camera, to uh, make them, uh, uh, to color them and, and make them glow, for example. Those things took me quite a long time, so I figured let's make a video about it. Maybe I will uh, help a fellow Gdorer, Dur, or Zelda fan along the way. Let's get to it. And off we go. Um, before we start, feel free to download the uh, PNG, this one, the asset that we're going to use in this tutorial. It's a placeholder, temporarily asset that I use in my own game, Aiden Jr. Devlogs on my channel. At some point I'm going to redesign it, so feel free to use it. It's important that it's grey, because therefore we can color it uh, to our own liking. So link is in the description. And with that, let's create a new 3D scene. And let's save it. And as, again, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to put the scene in the root and let's call it explosion. No, 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 no. Epic explosion. I think I'm going to improvise this video a bit because I think it's way more educational that you know what each setting does and that you can see what happens when somebody like me uh, plays a bit with all the um, little settings than just to copy somebody else's work. So this explosion won't be perfect, but um, at least this tutorial gives you an idea of how the particle system works and then you can tweak it to your own liking and make it your own. First thing that we need is to add a node and search for GPU particle 3D. This is the one you need. Double click. And it gives you a bunch of errors. It's not uh, drawing any passes and it doesn't have material. But before we do that, go to time in the right sidebar and put explosiveness on one. If you mouse over, uh, to the setting, it will say that whenever you put it on one, all particles will emit simultaneously instead of one by one. And because it's an explosion, we want all the particles to be there at the same time. There are a bunch of different properties that might come in handy. I'm going to cover a few of them a bit later on in this video, but also make sure to just mouse over them and uh, read about it yourself. In this case, I'm going to put the FPS to 60. We're not a freaking console, all right? PC masterish. Yeah, I'm super old. I think 60 FPS is already a standard among consoles. Unless you're Nintendo. <laughs> All right, next we're gonna go to draw passes and we're gonna add a new quad mesh to the draw meshes property. What this basically does is you tell the particle system what particles it should draw. In this case, we're gonna draw a mesh. This one is now one by one. Let's put it um, like uh, half a meter by half a meter. And you might say, this doesn't look like an explosion chap. Uh, be patient, jeez, I'm just getting started. Let's go to material right over here. It's still in the draw passes uh, property group. So go to material and select standard material 3D. And by clicking on it, you will get a bunch of different uh, property groups. It's like groups and groups and groups. It's sometimes a bit annoying to find the right settings. You can get lost in this sidebar pretty easily, but um, just follow along and we'll be fine. If you go to albedo, you can usually change the color of, um, of the mesh. In our case, we're gonna drag and drop the um, PNG that's in your project files to texture. Et voila. It's a nice explosion. You can barely see it, um, so let's change that. It also has a background in this uh, in this case. So after that, we're gonna go to transparency. It's here, a few blocks above the albedo, and we're gonna put transparency on alpha. Now it's slowly but steady starting to look like a an actual explosion particle. Since it's an explosion, you don't want the lighting environment, the world environment to influence the sprite. So let's go to shading and let's say unshaded. 
In this way, the particles won't receive any shadows. The explosion uh, looks pretty also whenever it's in a dark area, doesn't get affected by overlapping particles and so on. And if you look closely, all the edges are like blurry. And we can fix that by going to, uh, I forgot, <laughs> sampling. Yeah, go to sampling and select nearest. Now we've got some nice sharp little edges. There are still some weird um, uh, artifacts here and there, which is because of the import settings of the PNG. So click on the PNG and go to import. And here we can make sure it isn't uh, compressed. Uh, let's put it on lossless. I think that's, that will probably fix it. Yeah, next, billboard. We're gonna make it so that the sprite will always point or face towards the camera. So you won't get this effect where it's all like in perspective. Uh, click on the um, particle system yet again. Um, and within the material that we uh, were just uh, modifying, you can go to billboard right over here. And by putting the billboard mode on enabled, it will point towards the camera just like that. Um, but we're gonna put it on particle billboard. And by putting it on particle billboard, you still get to transform it. Uh, for example, rotate it whenever the particles get emitted. I'm gonna get to that in a bit. Also enable the checkbox of keep skill. In this way, the PNG will skill um, depending on the mesh size. So you can make the sprite go very small near the end of the explosion or make it bigger, whatever you want. But put this enable so then you can also transform the uh, skill properties of the little sprite PNG. Doesn't really look like an explosion yet, does it? Um, that's because we need to apply a particle process material. And I'm always looking for the little box. I keep on getting lost in this maze, but it's right over here. It's um, uh, at the top of the sidebar whenever you've got the GPU particle 3D selected. Uh, click on new particle process material and I think yeah, it will just start emitting, which is cool. Epic explosion. <laughs> uh, there are now eight particles right over here getting uh, emitted each one second. You only see one because all the particles are at the very same spot. And to make it look a bit more like an explosion, we're going to click the particle process material here. We go to spawn position. And instead of having those sprites come from a specific point, we're gonna change the emission shape to a sphere. Sphere, I always, I hate that word. Sphere, sphere, doesn't matter. And it does what it says it does. It basically spawns all the particles in the circle. And you can play around with the different shapes and read about it in the uh, documentation. And I think the circle is a bit too big, so let's change it to 75 and I'm changing the uh, the shape skill of the sphere All right, if we go to velocity within the spawn, I usually put the direction on zero 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 So it doesn't have a uh, emission direction. It doesn't really do much though But you know just to be sure just put it on zero 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 and regarding the spread Right below it, I usually put it on 180 for an explosion because uh, then it will use half of the circle to emit the particles. Again, you don't really see that much of a change, but um, again, play around with these settings yourself. And below, we're gonna add some randomness to the uh, velocity. We're gonna put it to one, to a maximum of two, uh, which will basically randomize the velocity of each particle. As you can see, it already looks way more playful. Um, if I overdo it by adding 10 here, then a few of those uh, particles will just, you know, fire away way faster, which is, could also be cool. So again, play around with it a bit. But for this example, I'm just going to put it on one, two, uh, two. And now we are going to somewhat simulate uh, clouds going upwards. So we're going to change the gravity. Uh, by changing the gravity, uh, it should be, where is it? Yeah, beneath uh, the group accelerations and then gravity. We can put it to, uh, to one, maybe. So now the particles will get emitted and after that it will get affected by the gravity. Awesome, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, it still looks a bit like smoke, 
So let's color the thing. Uh, we have to go back to the draw passes because the draw passes uh, was all about the looks of each particle. So let's close process material and let's try and find, where is it? Man, I will never get used to this sidebar. Is it just me? Oh, here we are. Uh, I was just staring at it all along. Uh, in draw passes, we have the material right over here. And at the color, this one, we're gonna um, um, play around with the raw values of the RGB. And by changing it, you see that there's also starting to show a little glow there, which is super pretty. Yeah, a bit more. That looks super cool, doesn't it? Um, you will only see it whenever you have the uh, preview um, uh, environment enabled. L let's say your world environment has the glow disabled. You will never see the glow. And I can make a whole different video about glows, how, uh, how they work compared to actual light uh, emission. Um, but that's for a different video. The too long didn't read version is that you should make sure that your world environment uh, has glows enabled and then pick your color via the raw uh, color picker right over here and just screw around with it a bit uh, and find your color to your liking. We are almost there. Uh, next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make them rotate. And since we have the billboard rotation to the particle billboard, we can go to the process material. Uh, where are you again? There you go. And in the particle process material, we're gonna search for animated velocity and then angular velocity. And here you can set some random values. Let's make it rotate um, 41 to, I don't know, something like this. Yeah, sure. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're getting there, we're getting there. All right, next, my favorite uh, is the, uh, the display. Right over here and search for skill. And here we're gonna add a curve, a curve. And we're gonna add a curve by just clicking on it and select new curve, click on it again, and then click on the actual curve uh, thumbnail here. And here we're gonna put this one all the way down and what this basically does is that over this amount of time, I'm going to affect the scale of the particle. So it starts uh, one and it ends with zero. If I change this, it will go to zero way faster. Could be cool for some spark effect, but in our case, we want to change this gradually. Yeah, it already looks like an explosion, man. Super cool. I like particles. Particles are cool. There's this randomness to it. I love it. Yeah, that's basically it. Uh, with particle systems, you just have to think about how are you emitting the particles? Are you adding some um, initial velocity to it? And then you're gonna apply gravity to it. So with those two things, you can make all sorts of things. You can make particles uh, push downwards and then slowly go upwards because of gravity and all that kind of stuff. Be creative with it. Um, what can we do for this example? Yeah, let's add some damping. Damping is a cool one. I think it should be, where is it? Yeah, accelerations damping. And with damping, you basically add some friction to the particles. The higher the friction, the slower the particles will go. For example, when I put five here, it will pick a value between zero or five. So in this case, some particles will just almost stand still and won't go anywhere. And we can also add a curve to it by just adding a damping curve. Select curve texture, click on the particle system here and apply some damping slightly. Maybe lower these numbers a bit. Yeah, so in this way, the, the smaller particles, they will just disappear and won't move that much. Otherwise, you know, you get this more shooting effect. You know, you can play around with it. Uh, you can make it so the explosion goes a bit more upwards by changing the direction. You can make it go downwards first and then go upwards by changing uh, the gravity. You can apply all sorts of curves to make it apply uh, based on time. All sorts of tricks to make your particle system look pretty, super pretty. All right, that's it. I'm gonna show you my implementation of the uh, explosion because I also added some uh, debris and some smoke, uh, which was super easy to do. You can just um, duplicate a, an existing particle system. Um, make sure to make the materials um, uh, unique. So if you click on this one, you can say make unique 
and whenever you are changing the settings here, um, uh, it won't apply to your previous explosion. Uh, and the same goes for the, um, the texture. If you go to draw passes and you click on make unique, you can change the, uh, the color of the texture, for example. So let's say we want to have smoke. You just click on the material, uh, go to the albedo, and then we're going to change the color um, to gray, for example. And since we've made the particle process material unique as well, we can also go to display and then go to uh, color curves and add a uh, alpha curve to it. And now if we add a new curve and we change these values a bit, nothing happens. Um, that's a bummer. It went so well, this video. Ah, yeah, there you go. We have to go to vertex color and um, enable the use as albedo. I'm not sh completely sure why this works though. Like if true, the vertex color is used as an albedo color. I'm not sure why though, but enabling it makes you manipulate the alpha uh, of the texture. Uh, it took me a long time the first time and now equally as much uh, with the tutorial. That's the, that's the monkey brain for you. In my own project, I've got three different particle uh, nodes. The first one called Debris, it just shoots out different quad meshes without textures, just some pixels doing <laughs> the smoke, this one. And if you emit those particle systems at the same time, it looks quite cool. And if you wanna do that yourself, uh, make the explosion explode um, by code and logic, Put all the different GPU particles in a scene, uh, add some uh, code to it, and then in the ready function, you will just say debris emitting is true, smoke emitting is true, fire emitting is true. And also make sure to um, disable the auto loop. And you can do that by going to time here and um, put the one shot on enabled. Otherwise, the explosion will just keep on exploding and, um, you know, then the one time explode thing doesn't really work. So put the emitting on off and uh, enable the one shot and then just, you know, make it go boom by code. I hope this video finds somebody who thinks it's useful. If so, let me know in the comments below because I think this is somewhat of a niche video. Uh, but, you know, if it helps somebody, then it's already mission accomplished uh, to me. Make sure to like, subscribe, uh, check out my devlogs uh, about my own game. Um, if you want to see some gameplay stuff, me making a fool out of myself playing video games, there's another channel, uh, the orange one. And with that, I see you guys around in the next video. Urgh. Stream! Nimmit